Hello, my name is Brenda. My channel is Handwork Maniac, and I hope you are all feel welcome here. Okay, I'm going to go over some Christmas stuff. Sorry, it's been way too long since the last video. So I have a list of things we have to get through today. I'm going to show you some Christmas stuff. I have four finishes to show you. I have, I'll show you all my current whips that I've worked on since the last video. I have haul, including a new stand that I wanted to show you and some fabulous project cards. Then we'll talk about plans for a minute of what I'm going to work on next. And I am going to film a whip prey video probably next week in between Christmas and New Year's. And a, I'll do another video where I show all the finishes I've, things I finished this year and talk about um, my plans for 2021 and my new starts coming up. And at the very end, I'll list some floss tube channels that I've been watching. I think that's everything. All right, Christmas stuff. Christmas stuff. First off, you may have noticed I had this hanging in the background on my last video. My aunt passed away a few years ago, and as we were going through her things, I saw this and was able to keep it. I was able to take it home and keep it. It's on, it's cross-stitched on kind of a tan Ada. It's beautiful. It's on, got this beautiful bell pull hardware on it. My aunt was a missionary in Denmark uh, when I was born. She was there for uh, two years, I believe, right at the time that I was born. So this looked Danish to me. And so I thought this is probably Danish, some kind of advent calendar because it has the, all the numbers up to 24, I believe, with these little rings on it. And as I was answering comments to the video last, my last video, someone commented from Denmark and they were commenting on something I had showed. And I said, oh, I just have a quick question. I have this advent type calendar thing that I think might be Danish. Can you tell me if this is Danish? So I kind of described it to her and told her that it was showing in the background of my video, only the top half of it, but it wasn't showing very well, you know, and she said, oh yes, that is a Danish thing. That is very Danish. She says it's called this, Pake calendar. I'm sure that's a terrible pronunciation but that's what it's called. She is H-K-M-D-K. And thank you so much. We had quite a conversation. Thank you so much for talking to me for so long. But she said, this is very, a very Danish thing to do. This is a Danish tradition. If you look up that word I just said and do a Google image search, you'll see all the different kinds that people use now. She said, you can tie, um, tiny presents to these and then you get to open the present every day. She said when she was young it was usually um, small useful gifts but it was just so exciting to open one every day. So you can put them in little wrapped packages and tie them on here or you can do candy. I had candy on mine. I'm a couple days behind and eating my little chocolates. But I just think it's so beautiful. I have no idea. My aunt did do a little bit of cross stitch, so I don't know if she made it or if someone in Denmark made it for her and gave it to her as a gift. But I just think it is so cute and beautiful. It's fabulous. And then also in her things was this table runner. It's a dark blue fabric and it's a stamped cross stitch. And I think HKM, you'll have to tell me if this is also Danish. I would assume this is also Danish because it has these same type of people with the little red hats. But it's been cross stitched on this blue cotton fabric I'm sure it was a stamped pattern that you cross-stitched over. 
and used as a table runner. It is beautiful as well. I'm so glad that I saw them and was able to keep them. Um, I have to remember all the Christmas stuff. <laughs> stockings. Just thought I'd show you my stockings one more time. This is my stocking. These were um, stockings that were originally in the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine. It, there was one in their premiere issue in 85, and then there was one in every July-August issue until 93 of the same series. They all went together. They all had these blocks for the name, and they were all different parts of a Victorian house. They were, it was called the Heirloom Stocking Series. This is my husband's. It's the workshop. So cute. I made one for my four children and one for Kevin and I. And then last year, if you were watching me last year, you'll remember that I also made one for my two daughter-in-laws to match because they asked, not because I told them that they had to have these kind of stockings. Um, if you want to see the video where all of my children show you their stockings, because I don't have them here, they have them at their homes. Go back to video number six, and you'll be able to see my kids showing you their stockings. Although Andrew's was missing at the time, so we just had to show you a picture of it, but we did find it later. And then if you go to a year ago, um, you can see the ones that I made for my two daughter-in-laws. This was the magazine they were originally in. This is the July-August 86. And this is the one I made for my son, Michael. Um, and then they put them in a booklet. It was Better Homes and Gardens who owned Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. So they made this booklet and put six, nine of the stockings. And those were the ones that were in the magazine between 85 and 93. Every July, August issue, these are the nine stockings. Yeah, nine. <laughs> There are all nine in this book, um, but this is also out of print. This was many years ago. It's gone out of print, printed again, gone out of print again. Um, but they are now available on the Cooler Design Studio website. All of those nine are available. You can just purchase them one at a time as a PDF, or you can order the hard chart. And then Cooler Design Studio also has two other stockings that... This one, because it has these same blocks, letters, uh, several of the designers who worked on, I think a few of the designers, especially Sandy Orton, who worked on the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine, are involved in Cooler Design Studio. So this looks like it's part of that same series. It's got the same blocks for the name. This is called Gardener's Delight Heirloom Stocking. It is only available on the Cooler Design Studio. It is not in this book. And it as far as I know, it was never in the magazines, but maybe it was. Um, and it's cute. It's got like a gardener's shed kind of things in there. Very similar design. And then, and they have lots of stockings on their website that are not part of the series, but are still beautiful. But they have this one as well. The top is different, but I think that you could change the top to these blocks and have it match the rest. But it's called Crafter's Corner Christmas Stocking. But it's a very similar design, so I think you could make this and also have it. If you wanted all of your stockings to kind of go together, I think this one would go well in that same series. All right. What else? Ornaments. These are a couple of old finishes that are not fully finished yet, but they're Christmassy, so I thought I'd show them to you. This is a series by um, Blackberry Lane. I have two of them done. There's a third one that has the shepherds on it. Uh, originally, she said there would be six in the series, I've, but that was many, several, several years ago, and I've still only seen these three these two and the shepherds. So I don't know if she decided not to do three more. So there's three. 
This one has the three wise men and uh, Bethlehem in the distance. This is, this is like 36 count linen, one over one stitching. So this is like a tiny haid <laughs> on crazy tiny count fabric. I don't even, I think I got like, uh, like half of it done and then Catherine helped me with a little bit and then I was able to finish it up. I will probably never stitch on that tiny of a count one over one again, but it made the most gorgeous ornament and I need to get it fully finished so I can hang it up. This one I did on 25 count even weave one over one, which was way better. I'm used to that. But again, I got halfway through it and then Catherine helped me, took it home because it was stalling and she took it home, worked on it for a little bit and then I was able to finish it up after that. Excuse me. Beautiful pattern, which also needs to be made into an ornament, but it is like a mini haid, tiny little haid. Um, this is one by Alessandra Adelaide. It has a, the pattern has a part up here where like an ornament that hangs part, but I decided not to stitch that part. I liked it to be just round. I will also make this into an ornament eventually. And this is also 25 count even weave one over one. That one's beautiful. And then you may remember that this one was in craft prison for a long time. This is by the Victoria Sam Victorian Sampler. It is supposed to be really long design. I would think it's Victorian Christmas is what it's called. And I got this far done and realized I didn't want to do any more. And so I decided it was, it was done, that it was just going to be this big. The tree was uh, incredibly hard. Lots of little back stitches, which you kept losing your place on the pattern. Straight stitches. And then it has ribbon embroidery and beads on it. Has some pulled work right here. It's a beautiful pattern. I need to get that framed and hang it up for Christmas as well. And I believe I showed you these last year. This is on my list to get finished this year. These were two of the, can't remember if it was Lizzie Kate or, or not Lizzie Kate. Um, Little House Needleworks or Country Cottage Needleworks. I can't remember which one. They're little um, Christmas series. I did mine on perforated paper. I just need to glue some felt to the back and put a ribbon on them so I can hang them up. My goodness. And I made these for my parents two years ago. And this year they are going to get, the felt is already cut out. I just need to glue them. The ribbon's already there. I just need to glue them and give it to them this year for Pete's sakes. This one's stitched on a uh, vinyl. It's a vinyl cross stitch fabric you can buy at Joann's. And this one's on perforated paper. This was out of an old cross stitch ornament magazine. I don't remember which one, but I have it in my notes. I can look it up. And I don't, and this was out of a cross stitch magazine as well, I believe. Ornament magazine, probably just cross stitch ornament magazine. Love those. Oh, and my sweater. I'm wearing my sweater. I had to look at my notes. I forgot. I'll stand up so you can see it really quick. This is the sweater that I finished last year that I stitched on. If you want to see more about the sweater, I started it in number video number seven and explained everything how I did it. And then I finished it in video number 42 and showed it with a little more, um, held it up longer with a little more detail if you want to see more of that. Okay, I think that's all the Christmas stuff I was going to show you. Uh, I do have four finishes. And in all my piles of stuff, I just have to remember where they are. The first one was part of the Friend Stitch Retreat in that was put on in September. They had two sessions, September and October, I believe. Might have been September and November put on by Bent Creek and Heart and Hand. And this was a pattern that we got from the retreat called the Gift of Peace. 
it's two pieces meant to hang together. I just did this one so far. And here is my finish. <laughs> it's on 32 count linen, uh, over dyed cotton floss. Beautiful pattern. I love the pattern in the snow. It's a geometric diamonds kind of pattern. I just think that is so pretty. The white shows up better in person. It's not showing up very well on camera. But that was fun. I will stitch the other companion piece to it. But not this year. Probably next year maybe. And... One of my mania starts was a Mill Hill ornament. That was a little gingerbread house called Winter. Oh, it's called Gingerbread Cottage, part of the Winter Holiday Collection. Tiny little Mill Hill kit with beads and floss. And I finished it. It's in here somewhere. This is in a beautiful Evertote bag, one of my Christmas bags. And here it is finished, but it needs, it really needs something brown behind it, but I guess you're going to get, that's oh, way too busy, about the back of a stocking, that'll work. It's at least half beads, probably a little more than half beads, and then stitching on perforated paper. I used all the materials that came with the kit. I just need to cut it out of the perforated paper now and glue some felt to the back and a little hanger, and then I can hang it up. So I'll add that to my pile of other things that just need to be glued, but it's so cute. I love that. So another mania finish, exciting. And then you may remember that I've been doing the Modern Folk Embroidery, a family patchwork stitch along, 2020 stitch along this year. We got a piece in our email once a month. He is doing one for 2021 as well that looks just gorgeous. It's out. You can go purchase it from him. Get ready to start. He'll send out the first section in January. I, at this point, I am not participating because I'm going to take a break from monthly stitch alongs. As far as I know, I may change my mind in January, but right now I'm thinking I'm going to take a break. But oh, his new one is so pretty. Here is my finish. It's on 25 count even weave, one over one. And I used the orangey yellow color is Supernova by Mrs. Seda Silks. She has an Etsy shop. She's located in Spain. And the green is Granny Smith by Belsois Silks. It was a lot of fun to stitch. The silks were beautiful to work with. Pattern was amazing. It was just, that was a fun project. And I also participated in the Linen and Threads stitch along this year. If you go to the Linen and Threads, I believe it's linenandthreads.com website. This is a free mystery stitch along. We did not know what it was going to look like before it started. He also does a free mystery stitch along every year. The PDF pieces are just lists. He just lists them on his website at the first of every month. You can still access the, the PDF charts from the last several years that he's done one. He is doing one in 2021. I don't know what it will look like, but I think he's announced at least the theme. It also looks amazing, but at this point, I am going to take a break in 2021 from monthly stitch alongs. But here is my finish. I'm so excited to be finished. 
This was so fun to see both of these. We're so fun to see everyone's different color choices, the different fabric that they used. Oh, it has just been more fun to watch everyone's progress and the ones who are still working on it. If you uh, search the hashtag for this, which I cannot remember, I think it's Linen and Threads Stitch Along SAL 2020, maybe, or Linen and Threads 2020 SAL, one of those two you'll see all the different colors people are doing this in. So pretty. This is 40 count alabaster linen and it's five different colors, four different colors of dark blue silks out of my stash and then that one greenish gray color out of my stash. I will list the colors in the description box below that I used. And I put it has a lot of initials on it. I put the initials of all of my stitchy friends on it. That was fun to add them throughout the year. So that was another finish. So I mean, that might be a record. Four finishes in one month, wow. For me anyway. Okay, those are the finishes. Let's get on to whips. So apparently I worked on Bump and Denight Farm during October and then when I made my video in November because I had already switched out that project to put it away for the next fall to work on again I never showed it to you in October or November of what I had done so far And one of the viewers commented and said um, I was hoping to see bump into night farm <laughs> I was like oh my gosh I never showed it so I'm showing it to you now it is by praiseworthy stitches this is what it will look like when it's finished. Mine is on 40 count Creek Stone by Silk Weaver. And this is what I have done so far. Finally started on that main house. That was so fun. Lots of Pumpkins, ghosts. That has been really fun to work on. One over one, one strand of thread over one, one strand of floss or thread over one fabric thread. And it's the called for um, over dyed cotton colors. Some gas, some weak dye works. And I'll pull that one out again in the fall and work on it again then. I'm such a seasonal stitcher. All right, current whips. Let me get my bin a little closer. This is Huckleberry Farm by the Blue Flower. Mine is on 40 count Silk Weaver Elegance. And this is where I have what I have done so far. Just about finished with the top third. I'm just working on this um, vine of huckleberries. That's the border. And then I'll be able to move the key snaps down and work on the next, the middle third of it. Very happy with how this is turning out. Such a fun sampler. Um, I used the called for threads if I had them, but I didn't have very many of them. I think I only had two or three. So I pulled the DMC conversion and then found a over dyed cotton in my stash. I have Quite a bit of stash right now of over dyed cotton because of my fabulous friend Robin in Virginia sent me all of hers that she wasn't using anymore. So my colors are very similar but I did end up converting to several just out of my stash.
This is Beachcomber in my BYU bag with the crooked lines from Jennifer at the Brass Button Shop on Etsy. I love her bags. They're 14 by 14 with a handle and a clear front. It's my favorite format. And my love my limb Q snaps fit in it. So this is Beachcomber by Carolyn Manning Designs. You've probably seen it. Lots of people are stitching it. Or one of her. She has several of these shooting star designs in several different colorways. And several other gorgeous designs. I started this in November because Stacy at 911 Stitcher, she has floss tube and a, a Facebook group, was doing a stitch along, a Carolyn Manning stitch along. So I just needed to start it. <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying, I had a viewer comment that I've told you before that I don't do well with designs that are repetitive when you have to stitch some a motif or a part of it several different times. I, I have a hard time finishing those. So I was a little worried about this one because it is very repetitive. So my plan was to start in one corner, stitch down to the other corner, and then maybe do it kind of working this way so that by the time I got to this section, I'd kind of have forgotten this section. And then maybe by the time I get clear out here, I will have forgotten all of this and then can work this direction. I don't know. So far it's working. It's working great. It's beautiful colors. I love this pattern. It's on 25 count even weave. It's an off-white color. Uh, the called for DMC, one strand of floss over one fabric thread, full crosses. All of my stitching is full crosses. If I don't happen to say it, it's a full cross. Really enjoying this one. Look, beautiful colors. I had to add this teal square right here because I realized doing this stripe all the way down to the corner, I wasn't ever going to see the teals yet. So I just had to put one of the squares that had a lot of teal in it in the next row in so I could see how the teals looked with all the other colors. And I was really surprised how many colors it has in it. Quite a few. Which makes it also um, less repetitive because I'm working with so many different colors. This is Pandemic by Long Dog Samplers, which I'm sure you are familiar with by now. Oh, right here. Here is what it will look like when it is finished. This takes coordination, which I do not have, apparently. Okay, here's what I have so far. There we go. I started in the middle, and then I worked up and found the top edge. I should probably take off this beautiful dragonfly that I got from Diana Z. So you can see that better. I found the top edge, and I'm working over to the, I think I'm at the corner right here. I decided to do that outside border in a darker solid green. And all the animals will be in that solid teal color. I am doing, this is on 36 count white linen. And I am using Sulky, S-U-L-K-Y threads. One of their blendables which is color number 4086. On their website, it also has a color name, Cactus. It's beautiful greens and just a little bit of a goldish green color in there. That's what I'm doing most of it in. 
And then for the solid colors, I'm using the Silky Solid Color, color number 1095. That will be what all the animals are in. I'm doing the back stitching of the animals with one strand of DMC 3810. And I'm doing the back stitching of everything that's the rest of it in this darker green 520. And then I decided to do that outside border in a solid green in color. 1271, which is the same as this dark green, just in a sulky thread. This is sulky 12 weight thread. They make lots of different kinds of thread, most of it for sewing machines, but they have this line that is 12 weight, which is a thicker thread. It's about the same as two strands of DMC. So one strand on 32 count fabric or 36 count fabric or 40 count fabric. Just using one strand straight off the spool looks really beautiful. You can see how big it's going to be when it's finished. It's large but so fun to work on. Very addictive because it's just that most of the time you're just using that one color and you just keep pulling off a strand and stitching, pull off another strand. So it's, once I get started on that, I don't want to put it down. This is Sky Blue Street by Soda Stitch, which was a 20... 20, 20, 2018, no, 2019 uh, Mania Start, I believe. It is a really long, narrow piece. It's a, like a street of shops. I think it is so beautiful. I love their colors. Mine is on 36 count white linen. You may remember that I started it using one strand of floss and then Mania last year realized that I just wasn't enjoying it. So I had decided to change to two strands of floss and my fabulous daughter, Catherine took it home and added just one more strand on top of the part that I had already done so that it would be two strands. So I wouldn't have to redo it or go back over it so that I could just keep going from where I was. That was very nice of her. I have reached the edge over here just in the last few days. This teal fabric I just sewed on. I don't have a very much of a margin on the ends. I knew I wouldn't because I knew that it was going to be tight on this piece of fabric. It's a very long piece. So you have to have a big piece of fabric, but I'm not framing it. I'm going to put it around a basket or a tin, a square tin of some kind. So I sewed this extra, it was just leftover cotton fabric that I had. It's actually from a quilt that bossy daughter Marie made. It was scraps left from that. I just sewed it around the edges so that it would fit better on my Q-snaps and I could stitch close to the edge. So that's all the reason this teal fabric is on here. Um, I had about... I had about a third of the flower shop done and then Friday, I decided that this is my whip that is closest to being finished. So I was, I'm really hoping to get this finished by the end of the year. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see a daily update of how, how it's going. <laughs> so since Friday, I have finished the flower shop and this phone booth over here. And now I had started in the middle and gone that far. And now I'm back to the middle and moving the other direction. And I'm working on the bakery. Most of my day so far today has been spent working on these videos. <laughs> so I don't know how much stitching I'll get done today. But I will be spending many hours on this every day between now and when I'm back to work. I'm off since Friday. Friday was my last day 
this of school, which is where I work at a public junior high. So I am off work until January 4th. So that's nice. Lots of stitching time. Fun project. Two strands of the called for DMC floss over two fabric threads on 36 count white linen. Hoping for a finish on this one. And then after I've worked on that one for several hours, like six hours in one day, six or eight, sometimes I need a break. So I decided that the other piece that I wanted to make significant progress on before the end of the year is Arcade by Long Dog Samplers. So you will also see a daily update piece on this if I've worked on it that day on Instagram over the next two weeks. This is what it will look like when it's finished. I think it looks like five trees, a forest of trees. Such a beautiful piece. Every time I show this, someone comments and says, why are you doing it on that color fabric? And I promise it shows up better in person than it does on camera or pictures on Instagram. Just don't show how the, the flash shows up better so you can see it better. It just doesn't show up very well on camera. This is where I am so far. This is 40 count conifer by Picture This Plus. I'm using silks for you silks the actual, in two different colors. The actual numbers, those colors don't have names. They just have numbers. They'll be in the description box below. Um, I'm using the gorgeous autumn colored one for most of it. And then this band of vines that runs right through the middle is the lighter color. And I worked on it last night. And was able to finish the top half of this tree right here. That was fun. So that one will be a lot of fun. I'm hoping to maybe have this maybe half done by the end of the year. Some significant progress on it. It has five trees and I'm maybe halfway through the second tree, a little more. So I would love to have three trees done and maybe part of the fourth tree done by the end of the year. This is Kringles by Little House Needleworks. This is a, this will be my only monthly stitch along going into 2021. It's a stitch along where we have like a monthly goal, like we want to get this room. We had, we were trying to kind of do one room a month with my uh, bossy daughter, Marie, and my friend, Kim S. And so far, we have stayed up. In fact, Marie's ahead of me now again. Like she was feeling like she didn't want to put it down, so she might just keep stitching until she's done with it this month. This is what I have done so far. I finished that room in November with all of the gingerbread bakery sweet treats. And I'm working on that doorway. It's the main front doors of Kringles right there. That's what I'll finish in December. And I still need to do, I just work on the roof a little bit at a time. So that's where that one is so far. This is 32 count Stormy Night Belfast Linen by Zweigert. It is, it's a solid gray on the back and then it's got a modeling over dyed kind of look printed on the front of it. It's a beautiful color. With the called for over dyed cotton floss, two strands of floss over two fabric threads. Lost No More is my daily 30 piece. It is a kit, a gold dimensions kit, which I don't think you can buy new anymore, but um, you can usually find it on the secondary market. I'm using the kit fabric, the kit floss, 
and I did pretty good. I started it uh, right before Easter in the spring, and I've done pretty good as a daily 30 piece, but I haven't worked on it very much since my last video. I was kind of focusing on those four finishes that I wanted to have finished by the end of the year. But I'll get back to working on it every day in the new year. Gosh, I have to scoot back. It's getting so big. Such a beautiful kit. Beautiful artwork. The artwork, original artwork, is by Greg Olson. I'm working down here on this dark part of the rock, which is what I've been working on. So that's where that is. The kit instructions most of the time is two strands of floss over and it's on Ada, 18 count Ada. This is Churchyard Christmas by Praiseworthy Stitches. cute little town scene with a nativity in the middle. I only work on, this is another seasonal stitch that I only work on um, around Christmas time. It was a mania start. No, it was not a mania start. It was, I started it last November. It was just because I want to new start. So I worked on it last year at Christmas time and then pulled it out again this year to work on it. Here's what I have so far. A few little ice skaters, those people in the sleigh with their horses. Working on this house on the bottom now. Such a fun piece. It's 32 count Mirage, which is the picture this plus, which is the called for fabric. And it's two and it calls for over dyed cotton, uh, gentle arts and weak dye works. And I'm using all the called for colors because I kitted it up last year before the pandemic when you could just buy any color you wanted to buy, right? two strands of floss over two fabric threads on 32 count. And then I think my last whip <laughs> that I've worked on since the last video is The New Normal by Long Dog Samplers. Get this right side up. Here we go. It will look like this when it's finished. Such a beautiful piece. And this is what I have so far. Finished this beautiful horse up here and the ocean bubble is finished. Working, started on the lion over here. Um, this is a monochromatic piece. It's just charted as one color. Um, so I'm choosing my own colors, which I'm keeping in my beautiful project bag that Victoria made for me. She is Victoria's Crafty Room on Etsy, and she also has a floss tube channel. She's fun to watch. I'm using sulky threads. These are all sulky, 12 weight in the bigger spool instead of in the little petite spool. You can buy them in several different, you can buy them in a petite spool on this bigger king spool. And then you can get them on a jumbo cone as well. But I keep them all in here. And Victoria made me, if you go back a couple videos, you'll see all of the different um, thread kind of holder things that I bought. Trying all the different ones. Oh, this looks, oh, there we go. I like just putting down on this felt thread holder instead of winding it back on the bobbin when I have a little piece left. So she made that to match the bag. She has these beautiful bags on her Etsy store. 
with the beautiful tassel and these beautiful DMC tags that she makes out of real DMC labels that come off. The, she collects them off the floss, makes little tags out of them. Beautiful bag. Proje it's a vertical format project bag for a smaller project than this one. <laughs> but it works perfectly for me to put all those uh, silky flosses in. That is 40 count. Oh, is it linen or even weave? It's 40 count linen. One strand of the sulky weight, 12 weight floss. I don't think I have worked on uh, any of my full coverages pieces since my last video. So that would be Disneyland, a stitching shelf, and Four Seasons, so I won't show you those this time. And I don't think I've worked on Peaceable Kingdom since my last video, because I was kind of focusing on those four finishes, so. But those will all come back into my rotation starting in January. Okay, I think that's all the whips. Let's go to haul, <laughs> which is not very much, I promise. I just have a little bit of haul um, with the new stand that I got, and then a few minutes on a plan, so we're almost finished. Um, let's do, let's do the stand first. I have a, I, I got a new lap stand or table stand that you can see right here from Belki Potoki. And I made a separate video right before this video upstairs because it worked better to show it on a table. So I'll insert that video right here. In July, I think, yes, July, <laughs> Vlad from Velky Potoki contacted me, emailed me, and asked me if I'd be interested in trying out one of his stands. And I said, absolutely, I would. So he shipped it one to me so that I could try it out. And I wanted, and he, and I said, oh, I'll show it on my channel right away. And he said, no, 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 use it for several months. Get used to it, find all the things you like about it, and then talk about it. And I said, okay, I can do that. So um, I waited until now, and now I'm going to show it to you and let you know what I think. First off, he ships from his website is vpatoki.com. The stand is called Velki, his products, his brand is Velki Patoki. And it came, uh, he ships from the Czech Republic and the Ukraine. So it came to me, he shipped it on August 10th, and I think I got it about September 1st, somewhere around there, September 1st or 2nd. So it took about three weeks to get to me, which wasn't bad at all, once he was ready to ship it, depending on what you order. And if they have it already made or they still need to make it, depends on how long it will take them to be able to get it in the mail shipped to you. But it came in a wooden crate. I mean, I know back in the day, this was how you shipped things, but I have never received anything in the mail shipped in a wooden crate. I was so impressed. It had um, bubble wrap and plastic around the outside, but once you opened it, it's a wooden box with with screws holding down the lid. So you get your screwdriver out to take the screws out to get the lid off. And then the products inside are in these beautiful felt bags to keep them safe while they are shipping. So they were each in their own bag and then there were bundles of felt all between to make it all solid so it wouldn't move around while it was shipping. The most luxurious packaging I've ever received. The most, I'm so keeping this box because there's got to be a great use for this box. I will find one. Sorry, slight interruption. <laughs> so he shipped me two products. This is his mini stand. Uh, it's a 
uh, frame, uh, stand to put your stitching, either a hoop or key snaps in. He has several different types of stands. He has floor stands, he has bigger uh, tabletop stands, lots of different things. Look on his website. You do have to create an account to be able to see the pricing, but you'll be able to see um, he has, it's the most gorgeous website, just beautiful to look at. But he does have prices in several different US dollars, in several different currencies, so you can see that. Um, if you watch Stitching with Luda in the Ukraine, she has one of his floor stands that is gorgeous. She shows every once in a while. Um, and Teresa Little Stitcher in UK, she also has his mini and box. Hers is in the blue color. This is in. I have this beautiful yellow color. He has several different colors. So lots of fabulous products to choose from. Extremely well made. Oh my goodness. Solid wood, very smooth, beautiful colors. I just, oh, top end quality kind of product. You can see right now it has a hoop in it, a very thin, um, just your regular plastic embroidery hoop that you could get from Joann's or any kind of store. You just unscrew this clamp right here to change it to something else or to take your project out. <laughs> I'm going to put key snaps in it. I just need to unscrew it to make it a little bit bigger. You can see that the clamp has is rounded space on the bottom and flat on the top. I'm just unscrewing it to make it bigger. It works very well for Q-snaps. I think because of that rounded space in the bottom, it holds them really well. Just have to unscrew for a while. Or if you had the bigger, um, wider hoop, the really nice hardwood hoops that are wider, it would fit in here as well. There we go. Now it's going to slide on me. I should be doing this on the table so you can see. I tighten it pretty good because I'm back again. I don't want the key snap to, to, to tip down, so I, I tightened it up pretty tight. This um, screw under here means that you can change the angle, if you would like, to whatever you want. It works very well on a tabletop. I would tighten it. You stitch, I usually stitch. I'm one-handed stitcher, I keep my left hand underneath, or you could do two-handed stitching if you want. And then when you need to look at the back, you just flip it over. I'll have to tip it up a little bit so that you can get to the back and end your thread and then back this way again to get back to the front. So I love that feature. And then you just tip it down again to where you were. Very easy to use, fabulous smooth, wonderful construction. I like to sit, if I'm sitting on a couch, so if I was at a class where I'm sitting at a table or a retreat where I'm at a table, this would work fabulous. You can see that it has a curved profile on the bottom. That is so that this screw can slide that changes the angle. So I come quite often stitching on a couch, leaning back with my feet up, and I like to put my stand, my lap stand in my lap. So I could put it this way, it would totally work fine. It's a little bit narrow to fit on my legs, so it's not as sturdy, but I've tried it, it works great. I actually like to turn it to the side like this, pull it up so it's standing straight up, so this is a little more flat. And then I would actually take this out and put it in the other way. It's a little more stable on my lap, this direction. And I would stitch with it this way in my lap, leaning back with my feet up. 
it was fabulous. I love it. And then if it's this way, then I flip it sideways like this to get to the back and then flip it right back over and then just keep stitching. The most wonderful stand. And when you're ready to pack it in your bag or in your suitcase or wherever you need to go, it just folds down flat. You don't take it apart. It doesn't have different pieces. It just folds down flat to a very small. So you can put it in your luggage or, in, or take it with you, put it in the car. I actually took, have left this in my car this last few weeks because I love to leave work and go and sit in my car where the sun's shining through the windows and the inside of the car is warm because it's, it's winter here. There's snow on the ground, but because the sun's shining into the car windows all day, it makes it warm in there. So I'll go out there and stitch in my car during my half an hour lunch. And this works really well. I can put it in my car. It's tiny. It's right there when I need it. I leave it in there with my car project. Travels very well. Just very impressed. I have a couple of other stands that I love. I have a floor stand and another lap stand. And I'll definitely add this to my tools, my stands that I use and will be using it. It is fabulous. And then he also sent me this gorgeous organizer box. Same fabulous solid wood construction, so smooth. Actually, let's do it right here so you can see. it and my magnet slid. That I had sitting right here. <laughs> All right. So the top tray is a cork lined tray. Beautiful, smooth, just, oh, just beautiful. I have some needle minders sitting in that tray. And then you can see the next layer of boxes, two here, a middle one, and this one. I'll take the middle one out first. This one's painted beautiful yellow. I have some tulip needles in there. My, um, oh, it's a laying tool, BLT, best laying tool ever. That's my laying tool in the middle vial. And then I have a little bit of little container of tweezers. Can't remember the brand name on those. Uncle Bill's little tweezers that I keep in there that are excellent when you're trying to get some tiny little threads out. Those fit in this box. This is the bigger box. I have some other needles in here, other sizes of needles and other brands. There's this box. Sometimes when I'm stitching with black, it's not covering very well. So I always keep some anchor black, some Avera Soi black, and some 103 silk black close by in case I need to change what black I'm using. This one, I have a measuring tape. A needle threader for when you have stitched too close your your little um, tail on your needle is so short that you can't even get the needle in to hide it underneath and so you're using a needle threader <laughs> to fix that problem and I have a couple of quilting peels in here that I use sometimes my grandmother's measuring tape it has a beautiful owl on it and then this is a um, I use it to frog, use this to frog stitches. It's a bigger needle with beads on it so that when you, have you ever been frogging and your needle flipped out of your hand and you have no idea where it went? <laughs> I can find this and the needle's bigger so it's nice to frog with. I think this came from my big toe, I can't remember. But that's what's in this box. And then in the bottom it has these sections 
I have some pens and pencils and my iPad pen in here. The reading glasses that you need if you're stitching and you're my age. This is a portable um, wart holder. A little pin cushion that I have in here. And several pairs of scissors because you need several pairs of scissors. So if you wanted your stitch, if you like your stitching area to look lovely and neat during the day, and it's out in your public people space, you know, out in your living room or wherever you sit down and stitch, but you want it to look nice when you're not stitching, you could have all of your tools that you use to stitch with in this beautiful box. And you could have your stand sitting out and it would look very nice. Um, just a beautiful project. I products. I can't say enough about how well made they are and how just lovely that they are. Thank you, Vlad, so much. I, I will cherish them and use them for many, many, many years. Thank you. Okay, now let's do the rest of the haul. Sylvia, oh, dang, I was supposed to show you, before we do this, that thing, let me tell you, on pandemic, I was going to show you this, um, Agent Paper uh, commented on my last video and asked if I would show again, I tried to explain a video or two ago how I'm stitching the pandemic with that um, variegated, sulky 12 weight floss. And I noticed that the colors on that blendable, the sulky blendable, it's changing colors about every five to six stitches, then it changes to a new color. So when I was stitching Pandemic, I thought it would be cool to try, instead of going across in rows, like I usually do, when I use a blendable variegated, I do one X at a time because I like to keep all the colors separate. You can go over and back. It will just kind of mix the colors together a little bit. Still looks good. Totally up to do you how you want to do it. But instead of doing it in rows like this and then back and forth, I thought I would, because that kind of creates a stripey look, I thought I would try something different. And since it changes color about every five stitches, I thought I would try and stitch, instead of stitching in a row, I kind of stitch one little square at a time. I do this one and this one and this one and this one. And then I do this one and this one and this one and this one. So if you have two rows running across like you do in the border of a long dog quite often, you end up doing this one and then this one, and then this one and then this one, and then this one and then this one, and then this one and then this one. So you do the black first, and then the red, and then the black, and then the red, which is what it ends up, you're doing little squares, but when you have a long row of them like that, it kind of ends up being two at a time. Or if you were doing a big solid object, you would do, I would do these black four first, and then these red four, and then these red four, and then these black four. So she asked if I would explain that again, because when I showed it last time, it didn't show up very well. You couldn't really see my paper. So I was hoping that would make a little more sense. It was just something I was trying so that I would have little spots of color instead of stripes of color in it. And I think it's looking really cool so far. And you know, you, you have these odd shaped stuff. So really you're just kind of, sometimes there's only three because of the object ends right there, but I just, kind of, sort of, of trying to do it in little spots instead of in rows. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, back to Sylvia. And my nose is running again. Sorry about that. Sylvia, who is S. Ward Designs on Etsy, sent me some project tracker cards that are so amazing. You know how I keep all, for me especially, I'll pull a project out to show you and then I can't remember what fabric it's on and I'm looking for that everywhere. I know it's written in here somewhere and what the color of the floss is that I'm using. So these project tracker cards, I'm gonna put one in every project so that I can remember for sure when I'm showing it to you what all the details are. But it would also be so cool to track other things. This one 
has the entire year, all the months down here, and 2021 here, and all these little boxes. So if you wanted to, you could write down how many hours or how many stitches you did on it on each one of those days. Oh, she's even got across the top 100, 200, 300, 400, so that you could, if you wanted to, you could count each box as 100 stitches, or you could just write in there how much time you worked on it. And then down here, she's got a place where you could keep track of your cumulative stitches per month as you went along. And on this format, on the back is 20, 22, and another cumulative place to write, and then a place where you can make some notes about it. Maybe you change some colors or something from the called for. She has several different formats. She also has this one where it shows the whole calendar already printed out. Let's show you it. She has the 2020 still in her shop in case you want to go back and a piece that you started in 2020, you have it written down somewhere else and you want to transfer it to this card but it has it like a calendar so that you could mark off the days that you worked on it. Maybe you just want to know how many days in that year did you actually work on this piece. Still, they all have that um, lines at the top where you can write down what the fabric was, who the designer was, what threads you're using when you started it. Start date, finish date, number of days that it took. And then the back of this one has 2021 and 2022 case this project takes you like three years which is totally common for me and then I noticed on her website she also has oh here's one right here if you have a really large project that you think is going to take like five years this one has two years on the front and three years on the back same places at the top to write down all the information and then you can mark off the days that you worked on it in those years. So cool. She has several different formats on Etsy, um, different things. She also sells them in PDF, in case you want to print them yourself. She has a variety pack of different kinds, and I think you can even um, tell her, I want this many cards of this format and this many cards of this format. She'll do that for you. Um, I think that was all I was going to say. So definitely going to be using these. There's going to be one in every bag so that I can keep... And I might even start writing down what... It would be interesting to see how many days you worked on it that year. Or how much, how many stitches or how many hours you worked on it every day. That would just be really fascinating. Thank you, Sylvia. So going to use these. My goodness. It's just runny nose day, apparently. I had two different people. Oh, I was going to look up their names and I didn't. Two people messaged me on Instagram and with a picture and said, uh, were you aware of this pattern? I think you need this pattern. <laughs> and I looked at it and went, uh, yes, yes, yes. Going to buy that pattern right this second. Look how beautiful that is. It is called, I think it's called Holiday Tree. I'm going to let you look at this for a little bit longer and then I'll tell you where you can find it. Oh, I just think it is beautiful. Okay, so there's probably a couple different places you can get it. I got it on Etsy from Lola Lotta Shop. If you put that all as one word in the search field, you will find her shop. And I believe this is called Holiday Tree. It's designed by, the, the stitching chart was designed by Cassinia Adoniva. And if you want to follow her on Instagram, she is this right here. P-A-R-A-D underscore V-I-S-H-I-V-K-I. That's her Instagram account. 
And then in her Instagram account, she said that, I believe she said that it was based on artwork by Julia Vigacheva. This name right here. And she, in one of her Instagram posts, she showed, she asked, she said, of these four different pieces of artwork, all of tree houses, which one should I just make into a chart first? <laughs> oh, they were so pretty. I want all of them. I hope she makes all of them eventually. It was a PDF download. It was $13.50 from the Lola Lata shop. Such a pretty pattern. So I purchased that. And then this is an old Prairie Schooler chart that I saw these made into little pillows at Keepsakes in Cincinnati a year and a half ago. Hanging on, they were upstairs. I don't know where they are now or if she's put them away. But at the time they were upstairs hanging in the hallway from a little um, pegs. It was so beautiful. She was, she had them on order, the patterns. They hadn't gotten there yet, so I didn't get one then. But I just noticed it on 123 Stitch and bought them because I just think they're so beautiful. It's called Still Life by the Prairie Schooler. And that is all of my haul. I did get a couple of Christmas cards. I got one from Pam and Steph of Just Keep Stitching. So fun. I got one from my friend Robin in Virginia. I got one from my friend Ray. She sent me this. And Jenny at Long Dog Stitcher. D A W G, Long Dog Stitcher. Envelope. Hello. She sent me this beautiful Christmas card. Thank you, Jenny. Showing one of her beautiful long dog pieces that she's finished. Okay. I think that's all the haul. So for plans, like I said, I will do a whip parade video next week and I'll do a finishes, all my finishes for this year next week and some planning of, for what I'm, how I'm going to do my rotation and everything, what my plans are for 2021. And then I am planning on two new starts. Um, I was going to do this as a new year, new day start. I always say that wrong. January 1st, a January 1st start. Kingdom of Books. It's a kit I bought from the My Bobbin website. MyBobbin.com It's also available in a couple other places. This one that I bought from my bobbin was a kit. It comes with uh, 14 count Ada and all the floss to do it. And it's made by, if you translate this, it's make it with your own hands. So the kit is made by a company called Make It With Your Own Hands. I bought it back in the summer from mybobbin.com and it did take probably almost two months to get to me back then. And I will, I'm planning on using the, I'm not going to use the 14 count white Ada that it came with only because I don't want to stitch. This wooden background up here is all stitched and I don't want to stitch that. I will stitch, I think this wood shelf part down here. That's all stitched as well. And I think I will stitch that and the books. I just not going to stitch this background. So I decided to try and find some over dyed. It's a really big piece. It's really long. So I found this is, let me find out. I, I bought some Ada, some dyed Ada off of Etsy. The shop name is Vintage Needle Arts Hand Dyed Ada. And they're on Etsy. They are Vintage Needle Arts. Oh, sorry. My Vintage Needle Arts on Etsy. So you'd have to search for that as all one word. My Vintage Needle Arts. It's 
right there at the bottom. And they had a piece that was big enough for me. This is 18 count Ada. The kit came with 14 count Ada, but I'm going to stitch mine on 18 count Ada. And I bought two colors. I bought caramel cream, which would kind of be a wood background look. And I also bought Misty Morning as kind of a blue sky look because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to do. So this is the caramel cream piece, which I've decided I did a floss toss on it and I've decided that this is the one I'm going to use. I really like how the colors pop on this one. And it looks like they have painted this fabric from the front because it's only got the color on the front side. Not the back. And this is the the blue. The misty, what did I just say? Misty morning. Which I will save for another piece. It's a beautiful light blue. A little darker than you is showing. They're both kind of that hand-dyed mottled looking color. Um, and as I said, I was I was gonna start on January 1st with my friend Sharon. W, which always reminds me to say hello to my other friend, Sharon V. Hello, Sharon. I haven't said hi to you forever, and I know you're talking to me. <laughs> so hello. But Sharon W and I are going to start this one together on, I decided this year my two-week break from school just happened to land mostly before New Year's and not very much last year. I think last year I almost had a whole week after New Year's before we were back to school, but less time before Christmas. This year I have a whole week before Christmas and after Christmas, but not very much time. I have to be back on January 4th. So I thought, I don't want to start this on January 1st. I'd only have like two days to work on it, lots of hours to spend on it before I had to be right back to work. So Sharon W. and I decided to start it the day after Christmas so that I could have that whole week after Christmas to work on it. So I'm planning on starting that. And then I may start my only other new start. And I may start this one as well sometime in January. Oh my goodness sakes. Really. This is a piece called shine on and it's in this quilt book the Bonnie and Camille quilt B book I bought this book from the fat quarter shop their website and I do quilt but I haven't quilted for many years I'd rather cross stitch at this point in my life so I bought this yes this entire quilt book which has the most beautiful quilt patterns in it beautiful so I am just going to stitch this and then it has just this one cross stitch piece in the back that is designed to look like one of the quilt quilt patterns that are in this book but I'm just going to stitch this and then I'm going to gift this book to someone who quilts but I just wanted to stitch this piece and it's the only cross stitch piece in the whole book and I believe this is the only way you can get this cross stitch piece is to buy this book it's originally charted for Cosmo threads. I think I'm going to um, convert it to sulky 12 late colors. So that will be fun. So I may start that. Those are my only plans for new starts in the near future. All right. Did we do all the things? Oh, last thing. I was going to tell you a couple of YouTube's um, channels that I have been watching. Floss tube channels that I've been enjoying lately. This isn't nearly all of them. This was just a few. Black Ribbon Stitch Studio. Denise, I love watching her videos. Bird's Eye Stitches. Long Dog Stitcher. Jenny, and that's Long Dog D-A-W-G Stitcher. Sunshine Stitchers. I have been so enjoying their whip parades. They've been doing one at a time the last three weeks. They've each done their whip parade. So fun. I love whip parades this time of year. I'll be watching all of your whip parades if you're doing one. I'll be doing mine in the next week. Uh, Minnie Gray, I love her channel. Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, Snug Harbor Crafts, Kia B, and Jen Lee. Those are just a few of the ones I've been watching recently. I hope you all have a fabulous December, and we will see you again next week. Bye-bye.